Y'all gonna get with the salsa in church. I'm gonna get y'all saved. One of these days. One of these days. <laughs> hey man, y'all doing alright today? Listen, the air conditioner is back working. Y'all can fix it. Y'all can help us out right there. Press the down button. Okay. <laughs> all right. Beautiful. Y'all doing all right today? All right. Good. Welcome to God Chasers. Amen. Amen. Listen. Um. Y'all see we got a little setup thing happening right here. It's two chairs. It's two chairs. So uh, I'm gonna need some help for this particular part of the service. Amen. Can I call up my beautiful wife? So that everything relates to another thing. Are y'all with me so far? Then he says something significant, and we can get all the way down to verse 26, where he says, let us, let us make man in our own image. So what God was showing us then is that even he is not alone. If God's not alone, you're going to have a hard time trying to be alone. It's a natural thing for you not to want to be alone. 
It's a natural thing for you to want people in your life, for you to want, uh, 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 for you to want the right, <laughs> for you to want the right people in your life. But your longing for people is not going to be canceled out. Period. You're going to always want relationship. You're going to always want people in your life. And so the the important thing is getting the right people in your life. Does that make sense? But everything fruitful in your life is born out of relationships. Say that. Everything fruitful in my life is born out of relationship. Say it again. Everything fruitful in my life is born out of relationship. So we're going to have to figure out how to relate to some people if we want to see the fruit that God put on the inside of us. Each and every one of you guys were born with seed. But you need somebody to um, anoint that seed. Are y'all with me today? I could have used some different words, but I'll use anoint. You need somebody to anoint that seed. And what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to help you to bring alive what God put on the inside of you. Does that make sense? All relationship, it, it, it looks like this. There is something on the inside of me and somebody is going to bring it out of me. Now, bad relationship looks like this. There's something bad on the inside of me. And my relationship with you is going to bring it out of me. There's seed germinating on the inside of you, okay? But good relationship looks like there's something on the inside of me, and my relationship with you is going to bring it out of me. Are y'all with me? Okay, so I need to be around the right people who can fertilize the good stuff that's on the inside of me, okay? Okay, I need y'all to just get this. This is just the, this is the prerequisite course, okay, before we start getting into questions. I need you to get this. See, relationships have to be real, Plastic only reproduces plastic. If I break this plastic down and I reproduce it, it's going to produce something plastic. Okay? So if I'm going to have a real relationship, the, the, the finite point to that relationship has to be real if I'm going to produce something real. Does that make sense? All fruitfulness, all fruitfulness comes from relationship. Okay? All fruitfulness comes from relationship. Are y'all with me still? Okay. All fruitfulness comes from relationship. If I'm going to birth something in my life. And some of y'all, I, I think I was surprised because I expected some of y'all to go crazy because you have something germinating on the inside of you. You have something that you know is about to be birthed on the inside of you. You feel it. You feel it growing on the inside of you. And if you have that, then you know that I need to be around the right people to produce what I'm about to produce in my life. I can't just hang around anybody. I can't just be anywhere. I got to go to the right places to produce what God is trying to produce in my life. I don't, when I'm, when I'm getting ready, when I feel those labor pains, I got to go to the place and I got to go around the right people who know what to do and how to help me push this baby out. Okay. You don't go to H-E-B when you start having labor pains. Are you with me? You go around the right people to help you produce this thing. Thank you so much. You go around the right people to help you produce this thing. So I need you to start thinking about your life that way, your relationships that way. I want to be around the right people that are going to help me produce what I'm supposed to produce in my life. Okay? All right. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, with that being said, again, Pastor Tab is here. And we're going to talk about relationships today. Amen. Say hi to the people. Hey, everybody. Y'all enjoying the series? Good, good. Tell them, tell them a little bit about our relationship. Just, just. The high-level overview? Yeah. Just, just on I top of the me. water. You yeah. can't see the iceberg underneath yeah. it. Just, just tell them about that. I'm absolutely blessed and grateful to be his wife. Um, we have been married almost 22 years. You look like you didn't know. You look like you didn't know for a second. You was in one, 20, and I carried the two. You look like you didn't know. I, I told him we're at a place in our, our relationship where I think the appropriate answer is just forever. So if somebody says, how long have y'all been together? Oh, forget, forever, forever. Um, we are high school sweethearts, got married at a wonderful young age, and 
our, our marriage, Petey says that we're dancing. I like that he says that because we dance well together. That's right. That's right. High level? That's good. No, yeah. that's wonderful. We dancing. Yeah. Dance like the way. All right. All right. So beautiful. Okay. We're going to get started here. I, we have uh, two beautiful hosts. We have uh, Pastor Mo. Is, is he's here. Pastor Mo is he's right there. And then we have Latwana and Marie is back there. And they're going to be helping us. So we're going to kick it over to them. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yes, all right. Hello. So we're going to be asking, well, you guys will be asking us questions. So if you have a question, if you have a, a, a little fan, please put it up. If you don't, raise your hands. We will come to you. And we're going to get this thing started. You have something? Amen. And so we're going to go, so we'll go like in this section, and then we'll ask a question on this section. I know, right? They got and a question. Exactly. You can do a question on this section. So if we move around. It's not because we're ignoring you. We just right. want to spread the love out Amen. to everybody, Amen. right? And so that's, we just want to give y'all those ground rules. So you'd be like, oh, Pastor Mo didn't even see me. He didn't say nothing to me. No, no. Okay. All right. Beautiful. All Let's right. go. I think First we have question? a question way up here in the front. Ooh, that's not you. Oh, that is you. Okay. There we go. Good. Vani, what's the mic number? Two. Don't tell me. I'm not working sound. <laughs> okay, yes. Hi. State your name. My name is Minister Tam. Hey, Tam. Hi. Um, my question is, is it okay to not be a people person and still be useful and work in the church? All right, I'll start, I'll start, I'll start, I'll start. Is it okay to not be a people person? Is it okay to not be a people person? Well, let, let's be clear about, about something. Okay, what is a people person? So, so, so there are, there are introverts and extroverts, okay? So, maybe I did that the wrong way. There are introverts and extroverts. Some of y'all are real extroverts. Some of us. Some of us. Introverts, extroverts. Introverts and extroverts. Okay, don't be call, don't call in names. No calling names. All right. Y'all stay with me. Okay? Let me let me teach. Here we go. There are introverts and extroverts. You can be an introvert and still love people. You can be an introvert and, 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 and still want to see the best for people or still want, you may not want to, uh, might not feel comfortable in a crowd of people. And that is one thing. And you can be uh, uncomfortable in crowds of people. That is perfectly fine to be a Christian and be uncomfortable in crowds. In fact, the truth is, the Bible says that whenever the crowd got too big, Jesus would, Jesus would go away. The Bible said he would go up and into a mountain and hide himself from everybody. He said, now his reasoning was that the people would have promoted him too soon before his time. And he would say all the time, you, they'll promote me before my time. They'll elevate me before my time. But the truth is, there, there, was some, there was some introvertism about Jesus. Jesus would go away to pray. He would go away. And you, and uh, let, let me just dig right here for a second. You need to learn how to go away for a while. You need to learn how to go away. You need to learn how to separate yourself, to subtract yourself from everything that's going on uh, on social media and from everything that's going on on CNN and uh, I don't know what, you know, what other Instagram, snappy chatty, whatever y'all doing, whatever y'all doing these days. You, you need to be able to separate yourself from these things. But you cannot hear me be a Christian and not love people. You cannot be a Christian and not love people. Why? Because Jesus said it like this. This is how they will know that you love me. By how they love, how you love one another. So this is the idea. Now, they can't know that you love Jesus if they don't know that you love them. 
Does that make sense? And I don't care what your t-shirt say, what your bracelet says, how, how many uh, church uh, functions you show up to. If you don't love people, Jesus said, you can't love me. You can't love me. You can't love me. You can't, and, 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 and not love that inactive way that we use now, like, like love is just a word, right? But no, love actively, right? Love looks like what? Giving. Every time love gives, all the time love gives. For God so loved the world that he gave. He told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. You can't say you love me and not feed my people, okay? So, so, that, so I value people who are introverts. Amen. Lord knows I value people that are introverts. There, there's, a, there's some parts of me that, are, that have an introvert, just small parts. That's why God gave me Tabby. She's the introvert. I'm the extrovert. Amen. Amen. That makes sense? That makes sense? That makes sense? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Beautiful. All right. You want to add anything to that? The, the only thing that I would add is that I think it's, it's um, that we need to be careful at um, not staying in a comfort zone because... Um, growth comes from stretching, right? And so I think it's super easy for us to to hide underneath the umbrella of introvert or extrovert. You know, we put a lot of emphasis on that. So you got to be able to know when it's, if it's something that you know that God has placed on the inside of you, and if it's a gift, then it's for the people, right? It's not just for you. So you can't avoid the people because mm. otherwise, if you do, then you're not sharing the gift he gave you. So. Forget what I said. She said growth comes from stretching. Whoa. That's so good, man. That's so good. And whatever God put on the inside of you is not for you. It's for other people. Or some of us, if we just learned those two lessons, we'd be better Christians. Okay? Amen. Amen. That makes sense? Good. Beautiful. Can y'all give it up for Tam for a question? Thank you. All right, we have another question. And what's your name, sir? Devin But my question is, Devin Alexander, my question is, how important is it for uh, marriage counseling, whether if it's before marriage or uh, after marriage? Amen. That's very, that's very good, uh, Devin. Thank you so much. Um, Devin didn't say ask it for a friend. He said ask it for myself. My question is... <laughs> I'm supposed to say asking for my question is it's all right you don't have to you, don't, you know this is not jeopardy we're not gonna count it off uh, so he says how how important is counseling pre or post marriage right marriage counseling right relationship counseling beautiful pre or post vitally yeah. it is vitally important it is vital now, the bible says it like this the bible says there is safety in the multitude of counsel there is safety in the multitude of counseling. That's a safe place for you. Counseling is a safe place for you. And you should be able to, listen, you should be able to, and I, I've been saying this a lot lately. I'm going to keep saying it. You, everybody in here needs a mentor and a mentee. You need somebody that's pouring into you. Right. And you need somebody that you're pouring into. That, that, this, is, this should be your, your goal as a Christian. We say make disciples. Well, that's discipleship. Yeah. Discipleship is somebody pouring into me and me pouring into somebody else. And so since I want that safety, I want safety in my relationship. Yeah. I need to get that safety through counseling. Now, we say premarital. Okay, yes, it's vitally important that you do premarital counseling. I would I would encourage anybody who's even thinking about getting married to just start the process of premarital counseling. You might find out that's not the one. Come on, yeah, I was looking for some amens. I didn't find any. Either. I looked on the floor back there. You might find out that that's not the person. You might, it, it is vitally important that you have premarital counseling. Sometimes it's just, you, you, you go on dates, but you're not asking the right questions. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And you get around somebody who's done this a few times, who, who's, who's, been, who's seen 
it done well and not well. There's two things you learn from people. What to do and what Okay, that's right. Y'all are learn church, boy. There's two things you learn from people, what to do and what not to do. And sometimes you just got to be around some people who've seen it done the right way and seen it done the wrong way. And they can start to help you guys evaluate and ask some questions to make sure that you, that you are the right person and that y'all both going in the same direction. So it's vitally important. Post-marital, absolutely it is. Absolutely. You need somebody to coach. You need somebody... To referee. Yes, yes. You need somebody to call the fight. Hey, hey, all right, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Man, can y'all give it up for my son? He's so handsome. Okay. <laughs> so, so you need somebody to, to, to help. So, uh, um, some of y'all... Um, I keep saying some of y'all. I'm sorry. I'm going to correct this. Some of us are not good arguers. Argue, argue, Ellie, is that right? Arguers. If you're not a good arguer. <laughs> sorry, I'm from the east side, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. All right, I'm joking. If you don't know how to argue appropriately... Amen. Then you, you, you might need somebody to sort of stand in the middle and say, okay, now you say how you feel. Uh, uh, some of y'all are in relationships with people who are so good at arguing that you don't feel like you ever get heard. Some of y'all are expert arguers. That don't make you right. It just make you good at arguing. Okay. Okay, so, so yes, you need that. You need people to give you strategy. 22 years. You need people to give you strategy. You need people to give you strategy. And I'm look, I, you know, I, I, even if it, it, don't, it don't have to be us. Trust me, this is not an advertisement for us. We busy. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. Kind of. Um, but, but you need people who, who you can sit down with. You need people who you can trust enough to tell your stuff to. Oh, Jesus. See, that's the, that's, the, that's the part. There's nobody in your life who you trust. There's nobody in your life who you, who you trust. So you got to get to a place where you, you, you have trust. Amen? You have trust enough to argue. So, yes, premarital, postmarital, uh, postmortem. You need all. You need counseling. Before, after, 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 after the after, after. Amen? Amen. All right, beautiful. Next question. Okay, so we actually went out into the city and got the help from some fellow San Antonians. So if you guys can turn your attention to the screen, please. Come on and run it back. We couldn't hear this. Lana, and I'm asking for a friend, what is the importance of you saving yourself for marriage? I didn't hear it. I didn't. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Come on. Come on. Tab just go sit up here today. She's not playing with me. No, I'm saying um, what I would like for him to do is say what he taught on last week in regards to this question. Um, right. So that's why I, I think that's the appropriate answer. You see how she do, y'all can learn something. She like, you so smart. You answered that so well on last week. I just think you could answer it again. It's just because you're so smart, baby. That is the truth. It's the truth. Okay. She good, man. She good. Give it up for XO one more time. Okay. All right. So, so, so the question was, why is it still important to save yourself from marriage? Why is it important to save yourself from marriage? Why is it important? Now, in order to deal with this question, I, I, I really need to get um, scriptural. I really need to get biblical. 
And really, that question is a, a much harder question than I can just answer in a couple of minutes. But, but I will say this, because there's treasure inside you. Period. Because there's treasure inside you. Because there's treasure inside you. Because there's treasure. Girl, there's treasure inside of you. Girl, there's treasure in man, there's treasure inside of you. And 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 a marriage is an agreement about that treasure. A marriage is an agreement about that treasure. And so what what you do when you um when you don't wait for the person who has agreed. To, 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 to deal well with your treasure. If you don't wait for the right person, then you'll deal with somebody who, who, who could care less about your treasure. They're trying to bless themselves. So you got to get to the place, you, you got to get to the place where you understand there's something before me. There's something, uh, excuse me, there's something inside me. There's something inside me and it's valuable. This is not just, an, this is not just a, Y'all got to help me if y'all got y'all got your kids in here on relationship day. Take your kids to children's church. They get a snack. Okay. <laughs> Hear me right here. It's more than just an exchange, a physical exchange. It's a spiritual exchange. And every person that you are with, you're giving yourself a part of. You're giving a part of yourself to that person. You are giving, literally giving away something that is promised. Something that is promised before the earth began, before the foundations of the earth. The Bible says, I knew you. Now, that's significant because it's the same new in Jeremiah that it was in Genesis. When the Bible says Adam knew Eve. It's the same Hebrew word for new in Jeremiah that it is in Genesis. So when the Bible says that Adam knew Eve and they conceived a child, right? So, so you have been inseminated. Before you were born. Before your mama knew your daddy, God had placed something on the inside of you. And there is another person on this earth that's supposed to unlock that treasure. I hope I'm helping, man. I'm really trying not to. We need to just do a, a singles conference or something. Okay. So we could just get into it. We could lock the doors and turn off the live stream. And re But, but this is what I do need you to understand. And hear me right here. There's treasure on the inside of you. And so I, I, don't, I don't want you to just give out that treasure. To any, God doesn't want you to just give out that treasure. It, it matters. It matters. And so the person, the, 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 and, and hear me right here, and I'll speak. That was a young lady, so I'll sort of speak from that perspective. The man that you're promised to should unlock that treasure. The, the gift that's on the inside of you, that should be the person to unlock that treasure. Does that make sense? Yeah. I can't go no deeper than that. Or I'm getting in trouble. Okay? Okay? So it's very, it's vitally important that, that, that you know that you matter. That you know that you matter. Oh, I ain't going to get a lot of amens right here. It's vitally important that you matter. It's vitally important that you know there's something inside of me, and I can't just give that away. It's valuable. It's, it's, it's valuable. Some of y'all... Some of y'all more careful with your purse than you are with your person. You won't put it on the floor. You won't... Uh, Ravon, relax. Let me preach. <laughs> or you get me in trouble. Out here. You won't put it on the floor. You won't let nobody hold it. You be dealing with stuff. People be like, oh, I hold your purse. Oh, no, it's okay. No, this is my, it's personal. Your, your, your purse can't be more personal than your person. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so, you, so treat it with value. Okay, treat it with value. That's, a, that's, what I, that's all I got. Okay. 
One more thing. Because y'all, I, I think we minimize what a, I think we minimize what a marriage is. A marriage is a promise. It's a promise. And God said, God said, when two or more agree, nothing will be impossible for them. So when I get married, I'm not just unlocking myself, my physical self. I'm unlocking the possibilities. Because nothing now is impossible where there is agreement. Sex is not about physically pleasing yourself. Sex is about agreement. It's about two people agreeing. And the Bible says if, when, there is, when there is agreement, there is nothing that is in, where two or three agree. In fact, God promised this much. We call it the guarantee of two or three. He said where, where, two, where two people agree, I'll be there. I'll show up. I'll be even when you felt alone, felt by yourself. When two people agree, I'll show up to that place. That's vitally important. When you, even now, if you, if you get married. You come here, we do, here comes a bride, all the stuff, everything. I send y'all home. Tomorrow, if you go to the state of Texas and say we didn't have sex, the marriage is void. You can go right up to the state of Texas and say, no, no, we never, we never consummated. Yeah, yeah, that's what that means. What the, the consummation is the agreement, okay? If y'all say we never agreed... <laughs> Some, some, some marriages you consummated, but you still don't agree. If you never agreed, then you can annul. Okay? Okay? But you got some, some people, again, you've, you've found a consummation with, but y'all don't have an agreement. Okay? And, that, and you can't see the blessing of God in your life where there's no agreement. Where there's consummation, where there's no agreement. That's why you should wait till marriage. Amen? Amen. All right. Next question. Whew. Look, oh, the flow. It was no questions before then. Everybody. If this has to do with sex, put your paddle down. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. State your name. Hi, I'm Andrea. All right. Hi, so, Andrea. Hey. Um, so, do both people have to have the same religious beliefs in order to have a successful relationship? <laughs> That's a good question. That's, That's a good very, question. Very good question. So I think we talked about this a little bit last week, and so I'll paraphrase in what we discussed, which was um, beliefs trigger our actions, right? And so if you're if you don't believe the same thing, it's pretty you can you can be pretty certain mm -hmm. that you're not going to act the same way in various situations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you believe that um, you know. I'm allowed to do this, and this person believes that I'm allowed to do this in the marriage, then you have a, you, you both believe something differently in marriage. And I don't think that, I, I think you'll have a, a, a ton of challenges because of that, right? And from a scripture perspective, if we, if we go to, um, what is this, Amos 3? Come on, Amos 3. So we say, How can two? Yeah. Come on. But it says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction if we don't both believe we're supposed to be going north we're not going anywhere we're, we're not going to make any progress in our relationship right if you believe we're supposed to go south and i believe we're supposed to go north we are just marking time we're not getting anywhere we're not successful so i think that it's important it's important now does it mean that at the beginning you'll believe everything the same i think that this is where communication and discussion takes place this we can bounce back to the premarital discussion right premarital discussions help you to understand well what do you believe right. we present you with scenarios to say okay if this takes place what do you believe and sometimes what happens is you realize hey well i don't believe that where did that answer come from right. it helps you to get to a place of agreement right, right? so it's necessary to me it, it, it is necessary it's scripture says that we have to be able to agree to walk together right that's so okay. good that's so good this is that's so good it, it, this gets back to dating with intention, right? Yeah. 
when I date somebody with purpose in mind, then I, I, I'm not just asking what your favorite color is. That's right. just, that's, a, that's moot, okay? That's, that's a moot point. I need, we need to get down to the finite things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we need to get down to, do you like your mama? Right. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't like your, if you can't love your mama, you can't love me. It's right. not appropriate. If you can't properly love me, you can't love the lady who gave birth to you. So, so, so this is what I'm saying is we need to get down to the finite points and dating with intention brings you there. Does That's that make super sense? Important. Dating with dating intention with brings you to those fine, to those finite points. Amen. Amen. Now, again, we're not talking, what Pastor Tab is talking about really has to do with, um, uh, unequally yoked. Yeah. Like the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with, your, with unbelievers. Okay, this is this is um, this scripture is not really necessarily connected to relationships, but it works in relationships. I could go deeper in that if you if you guys want. But uh, unequally yoked just means like I, I, I'm yoked together with somebody. Well, Pastor Tab said and who's not, not going, going in the same direction I'm going in. Yeah. We're not going in now. Y'all can y'all can have small differences in beliefs y'all are humans with experiences y'all can have small differences in beliefs you know what i mean you know uh, he, he i i can't he believes vanilla is the best you believe chocolate is the best y'all y'all can still walk together because y'all both like ice cream right but if he believes that the appropriate family size is 12 and you think it's one then you might have a bigger discussion at hand right i mean at some point yeah. you got to be able to talk about the the realness of a relationship but 12. PD, well i'm just that's I'm, a yeah that's a starting line on the football team yeah. with a replacement <laughs> I'm just saying. I hear you though. They no, could I be that you. vast. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you just date with point, intention. It's That's dating right. with intention. Right. You've got to ask serious questions. Once you've been dating for a while, I'm not telling you to go on your first date and say these kind of things, you know. But after a while, after you've been dating, you do need to have realistic conversations about what does go forward look like? And if we were to pursue, continue to pursue a relationship, what does that even look like, right? If you're not having those kind of conversations, then again, here's where premarital will help you. It'll help you to talk about real things. And if I could say this, it'll help you to overcome real things because oftentimes you go into it with an understanding that nothing's ever going to happen. And then you have your first argument and you think it's time to get a divorce. Well, it's an argument. It's just an argument, okay? You're disagreeing and you don't know how to argue properly. And so you're taught because we're all, we think, okay, well, an argument means yelling and screaming. No, it's just a disagreement, That's right? right? That's and so right. again, what we got to get back to is a place of agreement. That's and right. so premarital will help you or even after I'm, I'm, the various scenarios that we said right. before, after, during, whatever the case may yeah. be, it'll help you to overcome those things. Amen. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I see you right here, sweetie. Awesome. Okay, awesome. we'll get. We'll, I'm, I, okay. So we'll if we could just keep those hands and fans up while the questions are going, then we know where you are and we can get this moved expeditiously. Thank you so okay. much. Good afternoon. Hey. My name is Ivy. So I take ownership in where I fell short in my relationship with God. Okay. So. I know now that I have to repair my relationship with God in order to be a better parent to my children. But I don't know where to start in repairing that relationship other than to come to church. I know that I need to forgive myself, but I don't know where to start in asking for the forgiveness. I hear his voice loud and clear. But I'm here and I don't I don't know where to start. I need help with that relationship. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Ivy. And thank you for being honest. Thank you for being open. Um, last week somebody asked a similar question. I'm gonna give a similar answer. Baby girl, you already started. Yeah. You here. You already yeah. started. I'm gonna get you already started. You already started. Now. Is there other steps that need to be taken? Sure, absolutely. Maybe, you know, let, let's start with, I'm coming to church, I'm getting connected. Uh, for here, for, okay, 
this, it's hard for me to say this without it sounding like an advertisement for serving teams. But if you're not on a serving team here, you're going to feel disconnected. Because the people who are connected, loving on each other, whatever, they serve together. They're here. They're a part of it. They're, they're, they're cleaning the restroom together. They're vacuuming together. They're working the doors together. They're dancing on the dance team or singing on the, in the choir on the praise team. And when you start to find that, that, that when you start to uh, connect with those people on days other than Sunday, you really find real connection with people. Um, we also have G groups. We'll have G groups coming back up in July. We, G groups, amen. G groups are what we call, uh, is our version of life groups. And it just, you know, we have about 10 different groups. They meet in somebody's house. Uh, in, they don't all meet in one person's house. They meet at 10. Okay, I'm just making Okay, anyway, they meet at people's houses, and then and that's a good time where you just get to know somebody, you get connected. But the truth is, there's somebody like you, Ivy, sitting right next to you, sitting behind you, sitting in front of you. Look, Miss Renee back there, she's so, she's so pretty. Hey, Miss Renee. <laughs> so there's people all around you who are going through what you're going through. You're not alone. You're not alone. And so thank you for being honest, and thank you for being open. And you're already started. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're here, you bringing your kids to church bring your kids to church i don't care if you just drop them off your kids need jesus amen give your kids an opportunity i know you tired man i may be speaking to the i know you're tired but just because you're tired doesn't mean that you should steal the opportunity for your kid to find out about a true and a living god i'm telling you bring your kids to church my mama was on crack and she brought me to church Bring your kids to church. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you, mama. I love you. Okay. Thank you for bringing me to church. Amen. 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 Hey, my brother's right there. Hey! Everybody say hi, Big Dre. Hi, Big Dre. The only thing that I'll add to I'll that is too, that... Dennis. Um, <laughs> hi, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Dre. That's my family over there, y'all. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so the only thing I'll add is just, I think the fellowship is needed because you need the testimony of others of how they were able to overcome. So I think sometimes we take that for granted, right? But it's, it's that scripture, right? That this is how we were able to overcome. It was the blood and the word of the testimony, right? So sometimes when you link up with somebody, they can tell you, oftentimes we're embarrassed to share stuff, but if it's in testimony and you've overcome it, well, it's no more embarrassment, right? Because somebody may need to know, hey, I went through that same thing, and this is how I was able to overcome that. And you, you get those relationships. Again, it's not a plug. It's definitely not a plug, but this is where those relationships form. It, they're formed in serving side by side with somebody, right? And if you can, you can link up with two or three people where you say, hey, these are the ones that when I need something, I'm going to call them. I'm having right. a bad day. That's I need right. somebody to That's pray right. with me. That's I'm right. going to call them. You know, That's I'm right. going to text them. Somebody needs to tell you, hey, where were you Sunday? You know, right. somebody needs to text right. you and say, I get you had a hard week, but I'm going to be there and I need you to be there. That's right. So that's, a, so you're already doing what's right. It's an accountability partner. And that's all you need. You need an accountability. Raise your hand if you'll be Ivy's accountability partner. In fact, you see all these people. Okay. After so church, y'all better, y'all find this lady. <laughs> y'all find her. Y'all find her. Okay. I can't vouch for everybody, but my mama raised her hand. So I'm just going to say <laughs> That's the right person yeah. right there. She'll help you. Yeah. She'll, she'll Come on. help you. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Moving on. Let's go. Um, we have we have one question that okay. is right. online from Tiffany Lynn, and okay. her question okay. is: She next. You next. Okay. You next. Right here. You next. Uh, yeah. I'll should, see. Okay. All right. Mm. Tiffany Lynn's question is: Should a relationship be fifty fifty? Mm. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs> oh. um, some of y'all been going so, here too long. Yeah. Should, nope. a, rela should a relationship nope. be 50 nope. 50? The answer is no. If, if you're giving 50%, then you have to determine where's the other 50% of you going. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
I don't want 50% of Dante. He doesn't want 50% of me. So no, it's not 50%. It's 100%. It's all of me. It's all of him. So I don't, that, that, that kind of phrase, it's not correct. It's, it leaves somebody short. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm, right. Right. That's so good. And the truth is, this is, what, this is what leads to diminishing returns in relationship. Okay? Because now you only do based on what they do. Oh, come on. That's good. When you start to get into this 50%, 50%, you say, well, you're not giving as much as I'm giving. But the truth is, if we're both giving our all, if we're both giving absolute, then, then we're 100% in the thing. Right. That's right. Okay? I'm giving 100%. You're giving 100%. That equals 100% of what we have to offer. That's right. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm not giving 50% and, and, and you giving 50%. That doesn't equal 100% of what we could be. Right. Amen. So in relationships, we have to all be given 100%. That's right. Everyone, both of us have to be given 100%. Right? Okay. Right. Beautiful. Okay. My name is Zoe Simmons. And my question is, how do I like permanently remove myself from a toxic friendship oh that's so good that's so good see i knew your question was gonna be good <laughs> good that's so good okay i think it's fair to say that you do whatever you have to do right you know i think oftentimes if you know that it's toxic you know you should remove yourself but there's a part of us that feels bad for doing so and you shouldn't feel bad for removing yourself from something that is toxic. So if that means that my number is now blocked, if that means that you have zero access to me, don't call me, don't text me, don't Facebook me, don't Instagram me, don't Snapchat me, there's nothing wrong with that. It's toxic. Get away right. from it. Right. You know, and you don't owe an apology to say, right. I'm really sorry, this is why I have to do these things. Right. It's no, we've, we've come to the conclusion yeah. that this is toxic. Yeah. And from the sounds of it, You've already tried, right? You probably have already tried to figure it out, to fix it, to make it better. And if you realize that it's not, you do what you have to do. And that's then right. that's it. You don't have to apologize for doing so. That's right. That's so good. My dad used to say something. I didn't understand it. I thought it was just some like colloquialism, you know, like preach something preacher said. But he used to say, man, sometimes you got to love people with a long handle spoon. I didn't know what that meant until I saw somebody feed a pit bull. And they took the, the tongs, the tongue, tongue, is it tongue? <laughs> tongs, okay. They took the, they took the long uh, things and they took the meat and they stood back and they fed that, that, that pit bull. I'm not calling whoever in your life is a pit bull, but you, you, you know rather or not you've been bitten before. And it's because I've been bitten now, I got to love you from over here. And that might be far, that might be far, you know what I mean? That, but I got to love you from this space over here. I got to love everybody. I Introvert, extrovert, I got to love everybody. But that don't, you know, sometimes loving you is bad for me. So I got to find space that, that, that means we both can be healthy. That means we both can be healthy, okay? Because it, 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 the truth is, if it's toxic for you, it's toxic for them too. So I'm, I'm going to be the grown-up that creates the space that says, no, 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 I, I want you to be healthy too, boo-boo. So we both going to be just healthy. You there. just do it over there, and I'm going to be over here. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, uh, this happened in the Bible, um, there's, uh, there's, uh, Abraham and Lot. Lot is Abraham's cousin and, uh, Lot and Abraham are, are going in the same direction, but God sort of tells Abraham like, man, Lot, Lot's not the right one. And so a Abraham sort of says to Lot, which, which way would you like to go? And Lot says, well, I think I want to go down towards Sodom. He said, okay, well, I'm going to go the opposite direction. And then he says something so sweet. This is, a, you want to write this down. He says, and may the Lord watch between me and thee. <laughs> and you got to find it. You got to find that place where you say, and, let, and may the Lord, I know we say that in church, but that wasn't, that wasn't, 
that was he was he was being tough when he said that. That was a little sarcasm in there. But he said, "May the Lord watch between me and thee." As you go on your way, I'm going to go on my way. And I believe God is going to do great things in your life. And I believe he's going to do great things in my life. But I just believe together we, we, we make a bad combination. Amen. Amen. So is, does that answer your question? Amen. Amen. And then, and then don't be sorry. Don't be sorry for it because it's, it's going to be healthy for you at the end of the day. You, you can't, you, if you're sitting there, um, you feel bad because you're separated from somebody that makes you feel bad. That doesn't make sense, okay? So you got you to gotta say, it's okay. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry, and I'm going to move on, okay? Amen. I ain't sorry. All right. What's your name, sir? They call me Monroe Chapman. Hey, Monroe. What's good? How you doing, PD? Good, man. How y'all doing, everybody? My question is, is um, from personal experience, when you are building with a woman or a man, right? Um, I was building with a woman, of course. But, um... <laughs> Let's get that clip. <laughs> clip my throat. But um, when you building with a woman and she has a, the wrong idea of what intimacy is, how do you have that conversation without having a workshop with that person? Answer your question, Monroe. I think that you have to have that type of conversation with full transparency, yeah. right? You can't really, um, there's no way to really beat around the bush with it, right? This is, if this is what you think it is or it should be, then you have to be able to say that. Oftentimes, these type of conversations are not held with transparency. What it's, there are unspoken expectations that are not being met. And anytime you do not, tell someone what the expectation is, you are guaranteed to be disappointed. So at some point, again, if we, if we again, take it back to premarital, this is the type of stuff that you should talk about, right? When you're in a, when you get to a serious relationship, you should be able to talk about those things. If you're, if you're not, then you're going to be disappointed. There's no way. I, I'm not really sure about the reference of the workshop. I think what you're saying is just how do we not have some big, massive, thing about it or what have you. No, it's at the coffee shop. It's over dinner. Yeah. Yeah. This is where you talk about it, right? You talk about expectations. You talk about what it looks like going forward. If you don't tell, if you don't say it, that, that's one of the things I think uh, oftentimes in relationships, people think that the other person just knows. That's so a lie. That's a lie. I don't even know where we got that from, right? Well, you should just know. How? How should I just know? <laughs> You have to be able to explain expectations, right? And then yeah. that's where you can have a full, transparent conversation and come to a common ground, come to an agreement, and then you can go forward. Right. That's so good, baby. When I, whenever we're counseling people or whatever, there's three homework assignments that we give out. You got to have these assignments. The first one's easy. It's kids. Y'all sit down, tell me that y'all at least discuss how many kids do y'all want? You know what I mean? What, who, how many kids y'all got, first of all? Let's do that math. Carry the two. Let's have a real conversation about how many we got, how many we want, and go and, and have a real conversation. We're, I'm not saying that there won't be disagreement. There might have to be compromise, but that's the first conversation. You gotta have that conversation. The second one is, 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 is sex. You need to set out real expectations. And I don't want, it's homework. I don't want to know. I don't want to be, I don't want no part of this conversation. But y'all got to have it. Y'all got to have a that. real conversation. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is what I like. This is what I don't like. Right. This is what I mean. I don't want to do it. Right. You got to have that whole conversation. It's necessary. Don't, do not walk in front. Do not play, here comes the bride. If y'all haven't had that conversation. You got to have it. Then the last one is money. You need to talk, you need to know, again, what you got. Yeah. And what you got counts who you owe. Yeah. Don't play with me. I need the whole credit report. What's your credit score? I need to see, oh, no, this is from my first marriage. Okay. But it's mine now because I took your name. It's mine now. Okay. So, no, no. We need to know what you got. 
<laughs> what you owe and then what we plan to do together financially as we move into our next life. So you got to have these real conversations. Okay. All right, okay. Absolutely. All right. All right. Next question. Okay. Right over here in the back. Hi. Tell me your name. My name is Shiera. Is there such a thing as love at first sight? Um, I want to say that one day I was at River Center Mall. And uh, uh, my friend, my friend Nathan came frantically running into the back office where I was doing managerial paperwork. It's an inside thing. She said I wasn't a boss. I was just a, I was a worker. No, no, no. From the moment you met me, boss. Okay. All right. All right. Just to be clear. Okay. No. Um, and uh, <laughs> my friend came running frantically into the room. He was like, boy, some girls out there. Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, I shouldn't be telling this story. I went out there and I fell in love. No, that didn't happen. I went out there and I saw someone that I was attracted to. After I spoke to her a little bit, I found out um, you know, that she was kind, that she was sweet. I was further attracted to her. I wasn't in love with her. I was further attracted to her. Now, the way our relationship, this is why I told this story, because we, we ended up spending that entire day together. Like the whole day, just hanging out, chilling, laughing, chilling out, maxing and relaxing all cool. No big, no, 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 no. No nothing. No kissing, hugging, touching. No lustful. Just hanging out. At the end of that day, I probably loved her. At the end of that day, I probably loved her. That wasn't love at first sight. And I didn't tell her for like months because I'm a G. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, it was like a week. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> What'd you say? I didn't hear that. What'd she say? No, no, because, because, because love requires more than just googly eyes and goosebumps. Love requires some level of gifting and receiving some level of this is, this is, I've seen you in action. I've seen you, um, I, 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 I've seen you living. I've seen you on purpose. And because of that, I love who you are. I love the person that you are. You can't love a person that you don't know them. You can't, um, let me say it in a better way. You can't fall in love with a person that you haven't learned yet. When you learn them, you love them. You can't say I love you if you haven't learned me. Okay? And that's a lot of times you, you, so, some of us have accepted the, how that person makes me feel as love. That's not the same thing. Okay? That's some chemical imbalance going on in your, in your, in your body. That's not necessarily love. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, let's try to get a few more really quickly. Excellent. Get Thank you. Get out of here. Uh, and sir, who are you? I am Deacon Quentin. How you doing? Deek. Deek. DQ. DQ. So, uh, and, and my wife, Deacon Abby, right here. Hey, Deek. <laughs> so, I'm, we're asking hey, boyfriend. boy. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> See him? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Roger. Hey, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, look, that's Rod. Okay, look, man. So All right, my sorry, question go ahead. Is, my question is a two-part question. Okay. Um, how, how do you or do you um, act as a husband and as a wife before you're a husband and a wife? Is that possible? And at what point is it you, how much time do you give that person to, to get on that level before you realize it ain't it? Yeah. He said, asking for a friend, I'm married. <laughs> Amen. This is, this is what I'll say to that. This, basically, he said, do you act like a husband and wife before y'all are a husband and wife? And I would say act all the way up to the act. That's good. I'm not giving away my promise. 
until I. If you like it, then you should have put it. Okay. I'm not giving away my promise until we have a agreement. Okay. But this, this is what some of you, he got to have husband potential. Yeah. He got to, yeah, he got to have, he got to be doing husband lead things. She should be doing wife lead things so that you can see that they have wife lead potential. Does that make sense? Now, I, I, I hearken this back to, uh, 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 and uh, I'll make a long story short, but right before Tab and I got married, right, right before we got married, we were having a big argument. We, we, we was having a big, big argument. And we went to uh, my, my, my stepmother. We went to my dad's house, and we went to my stepmother. She saw us, and she came in the room, and she said, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> and then, you know, I was like, Tab, don't listen. She, 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 she said she's going to be my wife and she don't listen and all this, you know, and she was like, Dante think he know everything. He think he's so smart. He think he know everything. I don't have to do what you say, Dante. She still had this. <laughs> I don't do what you say, Dante. She still had this. <laughs> Dante. <laughs> that took 22 years to get. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but, but uh, right. So, so I this was so smooth, and, and I, I love Mama Jackie. But this was so smooth. She said, she said, she said, Dante Tab is right. She's just your girlfriend. She don't have to do what you say. I, I don't know what you think. You haven't married her yet. You haven't done the hard work yet to have her do what you say. She's just your girlfriend. And you just, your bo you just her boyfriend. And if she was your wife, then she would have to do what you say. But she's not your wife. She's just your girlfriend. And then she looked at Tabby and she said, but if you ever plan to be his wife. Just like that. I was like, ooh, she's smooth, boy. She's, she both got us got both. Yeah, we both got hit. We both got <laughs> tore up. She said, baby, but if you ever plan to be his wife. Yeah. We was yeah. about two weeks from getting married right there. She said, baby, if you ever plan to be his wife, yeah. you're going to have to start listening to him. Yeah. And that's, that, that's the thing. So, no, you're not committed to be that until you are committed to be that. You're not committed to be that for, the, for him or her until you are committed to be that to him or her. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. The only thing I'll add is just that, um, like Petey said, at some point, you know, as, as the, the man, the husband that will soon to be head of the household, if your household is in shambles, it's going to be very difficult for her to believe that you can lead you both collectively. Right. So you have to get your own self together while you're while you're preparing to become a husband and wife. You be prepare beforehand. Right. Be able to lead, be able to give vision. You know, hey, this is where we this is what I think we should be in a year. This is where I think we should be in two years. A woman can submit to that. It's very challenging for a woman to see. Well, what have you accomplished at 40 by yourself, right? If you, now you want to come and lead me, hey, you should be leading yourself first. And that should be a red flag for a woman. It should be, I got my stuff going on already by myself. If you're not gonna add to my life, I can't just let everything I've built for 40 years fall apart. You know, I'm, I mean. I'm just saying, you know, you, if you're building your stuff and you see he's not building his stuff, that's not going to change because he said, I do. That's not going to change. And oftentimes you, we think that. We think that, well, when he gets married, he will. No, do it now. Do it before you say, I do to me. At some point, we had a full plan. And I appreciate the fact that Petey literally said, hey, we move into this state. Be prepared on this date. And I said, okay, yeah. great. I'll move whatever day we say move that's when we'll go but if he beforehand he had already been doing these type of things but if beforehand every conversation was I don't know what do you think well who's leading me or you right and if it's me then you have a great life I, you know God bless you I'm gonna keep doing what I do by myself that's my opinion
two more questions, and this one will be Corinne, if you'd like to come up, please. Oh, oh, not Corinne. Okay, hi. I'm so sorry. I'm going to squeeze in between here. It's all right. like yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Serenity. Hi, Serenity. Hi. Okay. <laughs> My question is, why... Oh, okay. um, yeah, we got to hear you. Why do, um, in some cases, people who see themselves getting too attached to a good person detaches themselves? Oh, man. <laughs> I want to pretend I didn't hear it. No, I'm just kidding. No, that was a very good question. Thank you. She said, why does it seem like when, when, some people who are getting attached to a good person somehow detaches themselves? Um, and particularly, I'm just going to say it for her, she's talking about a guy. <laughs> that sucker. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, this, we could, again, this could be round down to specifics, but I, I don't want to be specific. So let, let me be very general and hopefully it helps you or whatever. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and and the Bible says darkness moved on the face of the deep and the spirit moved upon the surface of the waters. And Elohim, God, the God of gods, Elohim, God said, let there be. And there was. So God said, let there be light. And there was light. He separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day to darkness and night. Are y'all with me so far? Y'all didn't know we was going back to the Bible, right? It all goes back to the Bible. He called the light day and the darkness and night. He separated the light from the darkness, called the light day, the darkness, night, and the evening, and the morning was the first day. He saw that it was, excuse me, he saw that it was good. Somebody say good. good. And the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and the morning was the first day, and, 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 and then God started over on the next day. You with me so far? So on the next day, God created again. Everything he created on the next day, he called it good. The Bible says he, he, he separated the water from the ground. He separated the water from the waters and so on and so forth. He called it good. The next day, he, he, he created some more, and he called it good. The next day, he created trees and grass. He called it good. Created the, he created the sun, moon, and stars. Because uh, although he created light on the first day, he didn't create the sun, the moon, and stars. So a little bit further. Okay, are y'all still with me? He called it good. Creeping things on the ground. Good. Fish in the sea, good. Birds in the air, good. He called it all good. He's, he's, God is on a roll. He like, boom, there's that, and it's that, and it's good, and it's good, and it's good. And then on day six, the Bible says at the beginning of day six, he said, now let us make man in our own image and likeness and let him have dominion over all the things, everything. And so the Bible says that he had dominion. The Bible says that God began to make a man. He, he, he literally made a man and then he blew the breath of life into that man. This was the sixth day. He blew the breath of life into that man. Now, the beginning of the sixth day, God creates man. But God looks at man and says, it's not good that man would be alone. So everything good, 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 good. Bunny rabbits, good. Tyrannosaurus rex, good. <laughs> so got Tyrannosaurus rex, that's one of those Tyrannosaurus rex. Good. Dogs, good. Every creeping thing, good. Snakes, scorpions, good. Cats, I don't think God made cats, but I'm sure if he did, <laughs> call them good. looks at a man and says that we're not good. David said one day is like a thousand years with God and a thousand years is but one day with God. If we consider that to be sort of true and if we consider that to be kind of true, what David was saying, then because we know that the days weren't really days because the sun didn't come to the fourth day. And the way we count days is the sun, is the earth going around the sun. Well, the sun didn't exist to the fourth day. So we don't know how long a day was. We don't know if a day was 24 hours or 24 years or 2400 years. We don't really understand that. This is some biblical, the only translation we got was day because God said the evening and the morning was a day okay I'm I, I know you're like what is he talking about I'm still with you beginning of the day God creates man 
Somewhere during the day, he saw a man by himself. He said, hmm, <laughs> not good. It's not good for this man to be alone. Some of you, if you just had a camera of your husband by himself at home, you would know what God saw. You would see, uh, not good. <laughs> now, what's he doing now? Not good. Why well, he got the refrigerator open? Not good. Anyway, okay. The Bible says, he says, I'll make a helper for him. Are y'all with me still? Okay, he says, I'm, I'm being silly, but this is real biblical principle. So he says, I'll make a helper for him, a helper for him, a helper for him. I'll make a helpmate that is suitable for him. And then the Bible says that God created woman. He didn't make woman, he fashioned her. Oh, Jesus. Well, this will preach right here. But anyway, so he fashioned woman, but it is true. That Adam lived for some time. Could have been hundreds of years without her. So although she knows that she is a creature of necessity and that she needs him and that he needs her, he doesn't always know. In fact, in fact, hear me right here. This, this, this is the beautiful thing. He put that food, I mean, uh, he put that brother to sleep. Because God was saying, I don't need no help from you helping you. I don't need not any help from you helping you. So he puts Adam to sleep and then he fashions Eve and he brings Eve to Adam and then, she, and then he wakes up. He wakes up and then he notices her. He wakes up and notices her. He wakes up and notices her. The, the, the truth is he's, he's, a, he's used to being by himself. He's used to being alone. That's why you got to talk, but he don't have to talk. Here's a side note. The silent treatment is not a punishment. You're not punishing him. I just, I just help somebody. I just help somebody. The silent treatment, you're not punishing him. You ain't texting back. It's okay. You're not punishing him. He's used to silence. He operates in silence. Sometimes he needs silence. Sometimes you got to carve out silence for him. That's good. You got to say, oh, I'm taking the kids. We all going to go to the mall. Yeah, you, good. You, you good, babe. Just chill out. Yeah. You got to carve out. But see, the, the problem is you, Adam could have been without Eve for 100 years, maybe 1,000 years. Eve was never one second without Adam. Right. She was never one moment without. From the moment she was created, God presented her. To Adam. This is deep. This is deep because you're not used to operating without an Adam in your life. This is why you, you this is why you, you think, oh, I, f I just feel so alone. This, this is, it's, it's in your nature. You're not used to operating without an Adam in your life. That's why you're in another relationship and another relationship and another relationship. The problem is you keep dating the same Adams. Dark skin Adam, light skin Adam, thug Adam. You need... Okay, all right, all right. Okay, okay. She never, she never spent one second without Adam. Now, I need you to understand this because you got to know that you have a proclivity. It's, it's inside you to want to be around Adam. He does not have that proclivity. He's got to wake up. He's got to wake up. And what my hope for him is that he wakes up to you before you wake up and move on. That's my hope for him. My hope for him, Eve, is that he wakes up to you before you wake up and, and move on. Because you can't stay stuck behind somebody who's sleeping forever. Nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Okay, you gotta you gotta keep it moving. Okay, K I M, keep it moving. Okay, so you know I would give give people the reasonable amount of time and grace to figure out themselves. You know, sometimes when you're dating people and he, he 
21, 19, 22. He don't, he don't know himself yet. He right. hasn't figured it out. He don't know who he is yet. Right. He, he, he doesn't know who he is. Um, you know, I didn't know who I was when I married this young lady when I was 18, but I knew who I wanted to be. Right, right. And I knew I couldn't get there without her. So that's it. You want to know when I knew it was time to marry her? When I knew I couldn't be what I wanted to be without her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I needed her to be what I, I need to be in order to, to raise my children and to have our family, to put it all together. She made me better. She made me better. And when you come to that realization that this person makes me better, when you wake up to that, you do whatever you can to hold on. You lock that up. <laughs> my brother start clapping. <laughs> yes, Lord. Amen. Okay, one more. Okay, did that kind of? Yeah, yeah. I'm praying for you though, okay? We're, we're broken. We're flawed people. We're flawed people. I saw a movie the other day. There was a brother, uh, a man on it. And he looked at his, it was his daughter at the time. And he just said, I'm poorly made. Yeah. Uh, we're flawed people, okay? But God said it's not good for us to be alone. Amen, yeah. amen. One more, okay. Amen, amen. And what's your name? Tracy James. Why is she looking at him like that? What'd you do to him? <laughs> I don't want to answer this question. If you... I'm asking for Team James. Amen. So you guys have been married 20 plus years. Yes. We're trying to get on that same trail. Right. What tidbits can you give married folk that have passed the 10 year mark so that we can make the 20, 30, 40, 50 year mark? Real good question. I think that it's, um, it's very vital for a wife to be her husband's safe place. Um, home should be safe um, and you should affirm him. You should build him. Uh, this, at some point, over 20 years, we've been through our share of things, right? You know, and it, whatever it is that you encounter as life continues to progress, it's important that your husband knows that he could be safe with you, right? If he tells you, you know, hey, I'm having a challenge here or whatever, that's not something that you go and, and, and blurt out and share with other people. And, you know, you got to cover him. That would be my advice for women is that you, you got to know that he's my win, right? I'm not trying to impress other people. I'm not everybody else's wife. I'm Dante's wife. I'm only concerned with being the best wife that I can be to Dante. And I think it, it means that I have multiple conversations with him. I ask him, hey, what can I do better? And you gotta be mature to receive an answer like that because oftentimes you think that you're already doing everything great, but the reality is that you're not, right? And there's always room for improvement. And so that's what I would say. The advice is be a safe place, be somewhere where he can come home after whatever the day has brought and rest with you, right? Be able to be comfortable with you, be able to lay his head in your lap, right? Be, be able to even share his, his visions or dreams with. Be a safe place and affirm him, build him. A wise woman will build her house, right? A foolish one will tear it down with her own hands. And if, you, on, if you want 20 plus years, if you want longevity, build. Build, continue to build over and over again. You can never, you can never build him too much, right? I, I always say, like, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to win right there with building, right? I'm going to win with affirming him, and I'm going to win with being his safe place, being his friend, and knowing, like he said, when to give quiet space, right? When to be able to say, okay, this is not something to talk about right now. Knowing when to just lose an argument, you know, I, I, there's so much that you can give right o over the course of 20 years. But if I could, if you could take anything away, it's affirm what your words build and be a safe place. That's so good. That's so good. So there was this guy in the Bible named Samson. And he had this uh, girlfriend named Delilah. And uh, Delilah meant bad for him. Her intention was bad for him. But somehow, she could keep getting her, his head on her lap. Because 
even if you have bad intention for him, if you can be his peace, that brother will keep putting it here, keep trusting you with his head. Be his peace. Delilah was his peace. So he kept putting his head, and every time he put his head on her lap, I, he, he would rest for some time. Then she would say, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Here, get up, kill some more people. Go right back. Lay his head right back down in that same place. Listen, if you want him to keep laying his head in the same place, be his peace. Be his peace. Men are simple, right? We're, we're simple. We're super simple. We're, We're super simple. We're super simple. We, we, we really, a lot, oftentimes, we just need peace. We just need peace to peace. Peace. Let me just, hold on, let me just, time out. Peace. Okay? And if you can, if you can find out how to be his peace, man, it, it, he'll keep coming back for that. He'll, he'll, never, he'll never walk away from that. But it's, if, it's, if it's war all the time. Let me tell you something else about men. We don't like to lose. We don't like to lose, and we don't like knowing what we're not good at. Men run from things that we're not good at. And the more you tell me I'm not good, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, I'm not a good husband, I'm not a good father, I'm not, I'm not going to be any of them. I'm going to run from those things as fast as I can. Because I don't, right. like to, yeah. I don't like to acknowledge, I don't even want to see, if I failed the test, don't show me the score. I don't know, I, I know, I used to tell my teachers, oh, it's okay, I need a retake. <laughs> I need a retake. Men run from places where we fail. We run, hear me right here. We run from places where we fail, okay? Sometimes we don't just get better. We, we escape those places. Right. So what you, have to do is, what you have to do is help him to win. Yeah. Your job is to help him to win in every place in his life. If you help him to win, Delilah, he'll keep coming back. He'll lay right. his head That's on your good. head. If you, help him, if you help him to win and you be his peace, he'll keep coming back. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And the truth is, if you did it for 10 years, how long have you been married? If you did Come it for 15, 15 years, ain't no different. Ain't no different. You yeah. y'all know everything about each other. That's right. You ain't learned nothing new about that guy. Amen. That's right. Amen. So just keep doing what you've been doing, keep and congratulations to you. But keep doing what you've been doing. My my, my dad used to tell me this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my dad used to say, Dante, whatever you did to get her, you're gonna have to do it to keep her. That's good. I was like, okay. So I'm still, I'm still buying flowers and I'm still sending notes and I'm still sending texts in the middle of the day because I got to do the same stuff that I did to get her to keep her. Okay. Right. That's good. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Guys, that, 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 that's it for today. Okay. We're going to have to, <laughs> I know some of y'all still have some more questions and things like that. Amen at GodChasers.cc. I think it's amen at GodChasers.cc. If you want to that send a question, we'll try to respond to, to that question online. Am I saying this wrong? It's amen at IamAGodChaser.org? Yeah. Okay. It's one or the other. There's also asking for a friend. At asking for a friend yeah. at GodChasers.cc? Yes. Oh, that's it. That's good. That's it. That's it. Asking for a friend at GodChasers.cc, and we'll try, to, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get you an answer back. Amen. Amen. All right. Can we give God a hand praise all over this building? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's just take a little time and honor God. The most beautiful thing about today is that it is... Um, Pentecost Sunday. What's Pentecost Sunday? Well, Pentecost Sunday is 50 days from the day that Jesus was crucified. Okay? So we say Easter to Pentecost Sunday is 50 days. But, but this is what I want to remind you. That we talked about relationships today. But God came here to give you his, his life in relate, so that you can be in relationship with him. Does that make sense? God came to pour out his life so you can be in relationship with him. Don't leave today without a relationship with God. 
Don't leave today without a relationship with the Father. In fact, a lot, for a lot of us, uh, uh, the, uh, the relationship with God, the Bible says uh, that the relationship with God is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom in order to figure out who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing in your life and who you're supposed to be dating, yes, and who you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with. It starts right here with, with a relationship with God. So I, I'm going to say a prayer and everybody's going to say it with, with me so nobody feels alone today. But I, I, I dare you to start a relationship with the Father today. And I believe all things can be revealed. All things will be revealed. All things will be revealed to you. So we're going to say a prayer, and I, I believe if you say that prayer, you, you will be saved today. It's a simple prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Can we give God a praise right now for everybody who came back today? For everybody who came back to him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all can push past that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Wasn't that exciting? Wasn't that exciting? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Wasn't that exciting? Amen, amen. Let's give God some praise. Okay, all right, good, good, good. All right, excellent. Now is the time, now is the time in, uh, during service where you have the opportunity to give. You have an opportunity to, to give and to, to invest and become partners in God Chasers Community Church. So we are excited about that. Um, one of the key things that I took away today is that the EXO says that there is growth in stretching. When you stretch... When you stretch, that's growth, right? If you stay in your comfort zone, you're not growing. You're not growing. So this is an opportunity for some of us. Not me, because I be paying tithes and offering all the time. But this is an opportunity for you to stretch, to grow in faith, right? And so here at God Chasers Community Church, there are four ways that you can give, right? Can everybody say four? four. Can everybody say four? Four ways to give here at God Chasers Community Church. And there are the people that are walking right now with the envelopes, right? People that are walking right now with the envelopes. That is beautiful, right? And then we also have the kiosk that is right outside where you can purchase the t-shirts, right? And then we also have uh, God Chasers dot cc where you can go to the website and you can give there right and then we also have the text to give normally there's a slide but there is a i don't remember the phone number but there uh anybody remember the text to give number eight four three two one eight four Three, two, one. once again folks it's eight four three two one you can text an email to give so there are the four ways that you can give and what we're going to do is continue to move forward now i'm going to pray and bless the offering and tithes as they go around and collect eternal father we thank you for the opportunity to give today lord god to sow to bless your kingdom lord god we thank you for this day that you have made and we ask that you would bless each person some 60 some 100 fold lord god and we ask that you would bless their hearts your word says that you love a cheerful giver lord god so we ask that you bless each giver today in your son jesus name amen 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 and so now they're giving and again today was awesome uh, i know some of you still have questions left and they gave the instructions on how you can get those questions put out and so it was a great opportunity some of y'all was looking at me a little mad because i didn't get to you listen you gotta love me i got all kind of things going on i had to be over here lt was right there then i was over here so god bless you love me love me right so I, I'm, I'm excited that everybody joined us today i hope you had a good time today here we think church different right so the q a gives you the opportunity to ask those hard questions for yourself or questions for a friend isn't that awesome y'all looking at me like i got two heads on my shoulder isn't that awesome yeah there we go all right good good hey mom cassandra hey how you doing 
good to see you. Awesome, awesome. And so uh, we also have um, a lot of activities that are coming up, and I'm going to talk about those announcements in a moment. But um, really quickly, is everybody excited today, or what's okay? Y'all, y'all got y'all got y'all got real quiet. I mean, we got we got Roderick in the building. You know, I mean, it's I'm excited. I don't know if y'all excited, but I'm excited. We got. We got Dr. Dre in the building. Hey, I mean, y'all should be excited. I mean, we got Marcus in the building with God Chaser's orange shirt, right? That's All right, so I'm going to get these announcements out to you, and they're great. And I'm going to look for some participation to make sure you guys are listening, all right? So immediately after this event, after, after service, we have the G-Kids Ice Cream Social. Say, Ice Cream Social. Okay, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that as we continue to move forward. Ice cream social. We got the ice cream social, right? So it's happening actually right now. They have ice cream out there for the kids and everything. So that's a great opportunity, right? Amen? Amen. Okay, good. And so also we have coming up the Father's Day breakfast that is happening on Father's Day at 11 o'clock. Say 11 o'clock. All right, that's 11 o'clock on Father's Day, right? So for your, for your father... For your papa, for your dad, for, for, for that person that you want to celebrate on Father's Day, we have gifts available. If you need a gift, you can grab your dad a tumbler or a t-shirt at the closet for only $10. And that's over there. Yes, we have the closet over there. We got shirts over there. We got tumblers. We got all kind of great stuff, GC3 stuff. So you have the opportunity to go over there and get that before Father's Day. Don't get it in July. Don't give it to them on Independence Day. Don't get it now. All right. And then we also have the G Kids Team Camp coming up. Yes, G Kids. Yeah, yeah, the camp. Yeah. There we go. Now y'all coming back. All right. June 20th through the 22nd. June 20th to the 22nd. Say June 20th, June 20th. to the 22nd. Outstanding. And it costs $25. That includes a t-shirt as well. And the purpose of this camp is to bring you closer together to God and to each other, right? So it's a great opportunity to build that foundation. The word says, teach a child, train a child in the way that they should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Oh, I thank God that my mom allowed me to go to church when I was younger. And even though I didn't understand then, I certainly understand now. So I was taught when I was younger and G kids camp is an opportunity for you to allow them to get with people their age to learn about God and to get closer and build those friendships inside the house of God as well. All right. Is that all right? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Now registration ends on the 17th of June. So let's go out there and register. All right. All right. Good stuff. Listen, thank you for your time and your attention. I'm going to turn it over to our awesome Pastor and EXO, Pastor Dante Banks and Pastor Tabitha Banks. Give it up as they come. Amen. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Look, do me a favor. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. We're going to get ready to get out of here. I want to do something, though, um, that we've been trying to do lately because we want to give you an opportunity to be a part of one of the most amazing churches. One of the... We all right. Uh, uh, hold on, D. If you heard um, the voice of your pastors today, if you connected with something, if you connected with the word or you connected with some wisdom, if you connected with something and you said, no, I'm supposed to be a part of this church. I'm supposed to be a part of this body of believers. If that's you today, I want to I do something. I, 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 I want to be your pastor. I want to be connected to you and I want to be able to pass to you. We want to be able to coach you. We want to be able to mentor you. If that's you today, do me a favor. Come up here, take my hand and become a part of the most amazing church experience. Amen. If that's you today, come on, come on. We'll wait. We'll wait. If that's you today, we'll wait. We'll wait. If that's you today, there we go. Amen. Amen. Bless you, man. Bless you. Tell me your name. Say again. Everybody say, hey, Harold. Hey. Man, welcome to God Chasers, man. Look, fo follow that young lady right there. She's going to point you in the right direction. Okay, tell me your name. Hi. Stas. Stas. 
Oh, amen, amen. I like that. Everybody say hi, Stas. Do me a favor, follow that young lady right there. Come on, clap your hands in here for the brand new God Chasers. If there's anybody else, you can still come see us after church. Also, again, if you're um, if you need prayer, I want to make sure that we're clear about this. If you need prayer, right after service, we're gonna have people come down here. They're gonna pray with you. It doesn't matter what it's about. You don't gotta tell them all your business. But what you need is somebody to join with you in faith. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, uh, where two or three agree, thank you, Jesus, where two or three agree, all things are possible. So you need somebody to come in agreement with you. If that's you today, if that's you today, you can come on down after church. we love to pray with you. Okay. Now grab somebody by the hand, squeeze that hand, let them know you're alive. And I want you to pray for that person like you want them to pray for you. I want you to pray for their houses, their families, their cars, their children. I want you to pray that they have a blessed week and that God watches over them. Come on, one, two, three, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, we bless your name, Lord. I ask that you continue to bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, bless their coming out and their going in, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you. We give you glory and honor, Lord Jesus. I, we pray that you are glorified on today. We give you glory and honor in Jesus name amen and amen and amen I need you to hug three people on your way out please I need you to hug three people on your way out if you're in charisma I need you to come pray come on come on come on come on if you need prayer you can come up and be prayed for